On est dans le bout de Aja, euh, EJA, nos amis euh, de Final Cut Montréal de, de tous les temps. Et euh, on a toutes sortes de belles choses à annoncer cette année. Ça fait des années qu'on vous parle du Kipro, on vous a parlé du Kipro Mini. D'ailleurs, on utilise en ce moment même le Kipro Mini sur notre caméra pour filmer ces podcasts. Et on est avec notre ami Bryce Button et on va discuter de toutes les nouveautés chez EJA cette année. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us, Bryce, again. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure to see you again. And I'm thrilled because I see the camera's got a Kipro Mini right on its rear end. <laughs> Well, thank you for you guys for lending us this Keeper Mini. So, uh, obviously, we're, we're putting it to good use already. Yep. So, thanks for making this happen. So, this is, uh, I can say, a really big year for EJ. You've got lots of nice, big announcements, prototypes, new stuff. Let's talk about what's new and cool. Okay. I mean, we can start right at uh, the base here in terms of your experience with that Keeper Mini device. Today, we released a uh, 2.5 software upgrade. So again, just download the firmware. Uh, and it's going to help with certain cameras that might not be sending time code down the HDMI. Uh, it's got LANC support. So finally, you can actually use the LANC control so that when you hit stop and start on any LANC uh, capable camera, that can trigger it so you're not having to wait for time of day. Because it's not always just the time code. Often the time code is a cheap version, which is generally time of day. And it gets a little screw for recording. So. It's pretty exciting on that front, and there's uh, new flashcard support for that um, from Delkin. So if you go to the, the website and take a look at the approved cards, we've basically added another card there, uh, and a couple of other frame rate additions as well, which is really quite nice. Thank you for a 30p and a 60p. That's awesome. Yes. We're looking forward to using that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, th that's one of the wonderful things about the way we design these products is It's just not always technically possible to get everything out uh, right away. Um, but we design solidly, and then we make sure that we offer firmware updates as they truly work, because there's often a lot of issues going on. So no, it's very exciting on that front. And then uh, for your Kona users, uh, there was another big gift for them today. Uh, we dropped uh, 9.0 software. So if they go to the website and they download the 9.0 firmware, They've got 4K for free. So I'll be very clear, it's not 4K ingest, but it's 4K playout, which is what most people need because they've got file-based workflows going on bringing in the original files. But you can now literally feed out to one of the Sony 4K monitors, for instance, as we have at the front of the stand, um, or the projectors. So it's a big deal. So in the new control panel, you'll see there's a 4K mode. One of the things we saw that, that really piqued our interest, obviously, were the Phaser and the Riker. What can you tell us about these units? Oh, of course. So uh, letting the cat out of the bag a little bit, um, what we decided to do coming into the show is that uh, there are a couple of big breakthroughs going on in the industry in general right now. Uh, obviously, with Thunderbolt, this is something that As you know, we have a lot of partners, and Intel is one of our partners, and Apple is one of our partners. Uh, and it just made sense to show folks what we're doing and how far along we already are. Right? So it's not a selling product right now, which is why we call it Codename Phaser. Um, but on the stand here in the little preview area, you can see how it's actually working. SDI coming from the camera into the prototype, it's sending it out through Thunderbolt straight into the MacBook. So you'll see in the back here, you've got uh, your Thunderbolt connections, right? Uh, we've tried to add more things. You can see the form factor is fairly familiar for anyone who's had experience with our IO Express, right? Yep. Uh, but we've added a bunch of things. So six RCAs. What we're thinking of there is for a lot of folks that are beginning to see more and more 5.1 sound that'll allow them to actually feed the speaker systems. So have the component out, HDMI in and out, right? So again, working out in the field, you're still going to have a lot of HDMI cameras you want to deal with. Um, 
and we've taken our normal 10-bit hardware-based up-down cross-conversion. So this device will have full-on up-down and cross-conversion as well. And if you look at the front, what we chose to do there is since we can, of course, handle eight channels of audio, uh, which we've been doing even on the key pros that you have. So it's, it's a great little device. And uh, as soon as we can tell you we're uh, ready to go to market, you will. But, uh, we will, rather. But, you know, for the moment, it was just important to us to put it out there uh, to show that we're very far along. Uh, and it will arrive when it's ready. So a lot of fun. Riker is a different beast. <laughs> and I call him a beast because uh, it's about as much power as I've ever seen in a video I.O. device. So what we're talking about there is it's a PCIe 8-lane 2.0 supported chassis, right? So what we've, you're doing is you're putting the PCIe card in the actual Mac itself. And this time, all the hardware is in the breakout box, so to speak. Right, so Riker has all of that and more. Uh, we've designed it with two optional modules, so people will be able to hopefully stay somewhat future-proof and or add tools over time that they want to use. So the reason for bringing that to the show, of course, is uh, there's been a lot of talk recently, of course, of things like high frame rate for stereo shooting. Um, that box is perfectly capable of handling it. Uh, and the power of the scaler means that you can literally scale from very, it, it's completely scalable from 5K back down to a pixel and back uh, at custom aspect ratios. And this is real time. So what we're hoping to do there is, is help people understand that actually now that these bigger frame formats are becoming more and more common, uh, there is gonna be a way to handle them in real time, keep your costs down, uh, that kind of thing and offer as much power as we possibly can. So we have it here at the show to get feedback as well um, because we want to know what people would like to do with a device like this. Replace a Terranex. <laughs> I cannot answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, no, I mean, the, uh, the, there's just so much that we know is, that it's capable of. As you'll see when you look at it, there's eight SDI ports, for instance, is going in. Are uh, they 3G? Um, so you're talking about moving a heck of a lot of data. And um, we, we just want to offer something that's got some real power that will be as reasonably priced as something like that, that can be. Um, uh, and then we want to figure out what workflows people would really like us to solve. So that's why we didn't bring it out as a product uh, or talk about pricing or anything like that right now. Um, we're dying to hear from people, and part of what I'm doing on the floor here is actually surveying folks that have ideas. So, you know, we've already had input from people that are working on feature films, people talking about using live events and wanting to drive big monitors. So, yeah, I think it's going to have a lot of applications that it can be used for uh, by the time it's all done. So very exciting times. Well, definitely. I mean, uh, seeing or well, hearing about the Riker yesterday sort of reminded me when when AJ launched the I/O for the first time, and it was like, wow, we can do all sorts of things with this box. And uh, and and then every other year, you guys came out with a new, bigger, stronger, faster machine every time. We're like, wow, we can do all sorts of conversions, all sorts of I/O with this. And you've always been following the trends. Like right now, it's, it's we're, we're we're dealing with a with a, a chaotic tapeless industry, you know, and, and that's be become even more chaotic with, with the uh, HGCAM SR shortage. So at least you guys are there with, with both tape and tapeless workflows and, yes. and enabling all of these using the same tools. So that's really, really cool. And it's very important, you know. Um, we're obviously very sorry for difficulties Sony is going through right now. They're a key partner of ours, but they've been very kind and have been recommending our products, you know, to step in where there's a real shortage. Um, but yes, you're right, the world is somewhat confusing and it just keeps getting more so because of the mix of everything of just straightforward HD formats all the way up to all the compression schemes out there and now all these higher uh, resolution sensors that are coming off cameras and people really want to be able to use this stuff. So there's a lot of locked off potential right now 
Uh, and of course, as we've always been, you know, we're, we're a glue company. Uh, and we're interested in helping people convert, you know. Uh, that's where it began with conversion. And as you know, we've got the three main divisions of our company are basically acquisition, editing, and conversion. Um, so this gives us an opportunity to combine everything we keep learning. Every project we do is IP information that we learn from and can reutilize again in more and interesting ways. So, you know, on the converter side, we, we were able to do something really simple uh, in theory, <laughs> and that was to bring out our Hi Fi fiber today. You know, so the Hi Fi is the uh, SDI to, um, to, to HDMI converter. Of course, that's become very popular now all over the place because of plasmas and all sorts of things. Um, but firstly, running long HDMI cable isn't particularly feasible. Uh, and secondly, for the 3D workflows that if people had had going on, all sorts of things, they're literally running off sports fields and so on. So now you can have a converter that's going straight from uh, fiber to HDMI. So nice, simple device. Uh, and we're looking forward to getting that out here real soon. Um, and then finally, uh, the FS2. You know, being a broadcast company, that's still the heart of what we do. Uh, and it's important to us because being a broadcast company means we try to buy stuff that builds stuff rather, that doesn't break. Uh, it's known uh, colloquially as reliability <laughs> and support and that type of thing. And it's gone into the thinking this is, this is hardware that has had a number of years of development and it's now called the FS2. So for folks that have needed frame synchronization, that have needed to do multiple and complex hardware conversions uh, in the broadcast space and even in post spaces because we this has grown the fs1 has been an incredible selling uh, product for us um, the fs2 basically gives you two channels now uh, not just that it gives you dolby e encoders and decoders if you want it it adds fiber options if you want it so you're looking at two full-blown frame synchronizers and converters with proc amp controls, etc., uh, all in one one rack unit device. So you know, one of the things we notice as we go around the industry and we spend a lot of time speaking to customers, and um, it struck us that uh, that folks were really wanting to regain rack space. So the ability to put these optional Dolby uh, cards, for instance, in, into a frame synchronizer right there without sucking up. Uh, frame uh, space all over again. It's a huge deal, actually. So we're very excited about that product, and at under five thousand dollars, it's nothing like it out there. So uh, it's been a big day for us again. <laughs> it's great fun. <laughs> well, I'm I'm sure you'll be getting lots of lots of support from from the post community about uh, about your upcoming products, and and obviously the FS2 is great. We have FS1 at the facility. It's it's basically our, our master control unit. Everything goes in and out through it to make right. sure that all of our signal is rock solid, and we do live TV. So it's it's a great unit. I'll agree with you. And and I guess that's what we love about AJ is it's it's always you know you can trust the units all the time. Yes, and you know every now and again when there's some kind of slip up wherever it comes from, the world's not perfect. Um, I'm very proud of our support. You know, we're, we're a company that does RMA first. It's, it's about keeping people working. You know, and our show theme this year is work period, flow period. And the workflows are the biggest headaches that everyone's facing on a daily basis. As, as more and more items and digital formats get combined uh, with analog still and but just between the different digital formats, they're more, it's more and more complex. Um, so, but you know, we, we're about being there to stand behind what we put out there because all of us have worked in the field at some point or another. We're, we're, we've got deep backgrounds and it's, I think it shows in the products we deliver. So thank you very much again. Thank you, Bryce, for taking the time to talk to us. Alors, euh, beaucoup de nouveautés de chez AJ. Et puis, euh, on, on, on apprend, ben, en fait, on découvre à chaque fois comment le, le support et la stabilité et la robustesse est importante pour cette compagnie qu'on aime bien.